The future of rail promises to bring progress and improvement. Advanced technology means better, faster trains and shorter travel times. Right? Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Today's modern Amtrak Empire Builder is the only remaining passenger train between Chicago, Illinois and Minneapolis, Minnesota. According to the schedule on Amtrak.com, the journey will take 7 hours and 51 minutes. Would you believe that almost 100 years ago, this trip was over a full hour shorter? How's that for progress? Beginning in 1935, the Chicago and Northwestern Railway ran their famous Twin Cities 400s. The 400 name implied that the high-speed, high-priority trains would travel 400 miles in only 400 minutes. The actual route was 420 miles, with the fastest scheduled service taking only 6 hours and 15 minutes, an hour and a half shorter than today's journey. But today, Amtrak's Empire Builder to Minneapolis does not travel the route of the 400s, and instead uses the tracks of the old Milwaukee Road. However, it is still possible to travel part of this storied route on a metro commuter train, although at much slower speeds. Let's take a step back in time and take a leisurely trip on a small piece of the route of the legendary Twin Cities 400s. Retracing the route of the 400s will require boarding a metro train on the Union Pacific North Line. We leave from the Ogilvy Transportation Center in downtown Chicago, a thoroughly modern station on the site of the former Chicago and Northwestern Terminal. The only visible remnant of the old station is the original track and platform layout. Even the train shed over the tracks has been replaced with a new structure, although designers stayed true to the original Bush design used by the predecessor railroad. This was a revolutionary design for the time, which protected passengers from the elements while still providing great ventilation for the engine exhaust. Leaving Chicago, we follow the tracks built by the Chicago and Northwestern and make our first stop off at Davis Street in Evanston, Illinois. We then continue up the line, taking in views from the stations of Wilmette, Winnetka, Hubbard Woods, Glencoe, and finally Highland Park. Although our exploration of the route of the 400s ends here, you can still continue on the line aboard a metro train north all the way to Kenosha, Wisconsin. The Union Pacific North Line parallels the CTA L train here at Davis Street in Evanston. This is the last metro stop within CTA territory before we head out into more suburban neighborhoods. A northbound train arrives from Chicago. You will notice that unlike with most U.S. railroads, the trains run on the left-hand side of the line. This is true of all trains in the area on former Chicago and Northwestern lines. To learn more about why they do this, check out our video from Season 1 linked in the description. Our next stopover is in Wilmette, where we see a Union Pacific work train on the inbound track. Union Pacific owns this line and is thus responsible for all maintenance. An inbound Metra temporarily runs on the outbound main to avoid the work train. We arrive at Winnetka, where you can still see the name of the railroad that operated the Twin Cities 400s emblazoned on the side of the historic station. During busy times, some metro trains terminate here and ferry passengers back into downtown Chicago. We see one such train sitting on the inbound track as another train heads north to Kenosha. At Hubbard Woods, a midday train stops to pick up a few passengers on their way into the city.
Looking south down the line towards Chicago, we get a clear view of the Green Bay Trail on the left-hand side. This hiking and bike path is the former right-of-way of the Chicago, North Shore, and Milwaukee Railroad, an interurban electric railway which operated between Chicago and Milwaukee until January of 1963. The bucolic village of Glencoe provides the backdrop for an outbound metro train from Chicago. The station is just a short walk from the shore of Lake Michigan. With the white sands and crystal blue waters, you would be forgiven for thinking you had gotten off the train in the Caribbean. Back at the station, an inbound train arrives powered by one of the X Amtrak F-59 PHI locomotives, still wearing a slightly modified version of Amtrak's Surfliner paint scheme. The last stop on our tour of the Route of the 400s is the town of Highland Park, where we see a train from Kenosha picking up passengers before heading south into the city. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Rail Weekly. Please support the channel by visiting railweekly.com and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week.